Hello again team, it's Jess or Jessica Ren, and welcome back for another video. Today we are setting up for January 2022, which honestly just sounds really bloody weird, but... <laughs> Today we are setting up for January 2022 in the journal we gave away as part of our journal giveaway at the start of December. For this monthly setup we are going with a simple Polaroids theme, and as per the last giveaway journal, all of this is going to be set up in black and white. This means that our giveaway winner can add colour if they want to, and also add colour using their own materials, which means they'll better be able to get continuity throughout their pages, or in general an overall cohesive colour palette. As per usual, any of the equipment I've used in today's setup is linked in the description box below, but as you can see here we are starting with the cover page. The design of this one was very much inspired by a little Olive Bujo over on Instagram, who did a similar theme but also incorporated daisies. I decided to step away from the flowers for this one, mainly because drawing florals is not a strong point of mine. But for this front cover design we have a modern Polaroid camera, and the picture that's coming at the top is a mini calendar for January. For all of the line work in this setup, I have opted to use a waterproof pen, so that if our giveaway winner wants to add any colour in, if they're using water-based markers, it means that we hopefully won't get any bleeding from the black ink. My current black fineliner of choice is the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen, but I'd be very curious to hear about what you guys use in your journals. I'm thinking of trying some different black pens in the new year, so it'd be good to have some recommendations. As I do with every monthly setup, I like to have repeated elements between each of the pages, just so that they all look like they go together. And one of the repeated elements I used this month was these white typewriter letters on a black background. For all of the headers in this setup, including the cover page, the monthly log, trackers, and the weeklies, before I started filming, I first went in and measured up all of the spaces I wanted the headers to go, and I made those as printouts on Microsoft Word. I just find this to be a quick and easy way to get headers in lettering styles that are either a bit more creative, or maybe in lettering styles that you're not super confident in doing yourself. I do have a separate video on the process for how I do that, if you're curious, and as always any videos related to this one can be found in the description box. In terms of timing from first touch of the pen to final erasings, our cover page took about 10 minutes, but as always this doesn't include sketching in time. Flipping over though, and we are on to the monthly log. As per all of the monthly logs in the giveaway journal setups, I've opted to do a calendar style layout, where each of the calendar boxes is 6 squares across by 6 squares down. For the majority of the Polaroid doodles that I used in today's setup, I opted to draw them in without a ruler. This is something a little bit out of the ordinary for me, but I made this choice for a couple of reasons. The first one was that it's actually just a lot faster to draw them in without a ruler, because I'm very much the kind of person who takes a lot of time to make sure my ruler is lined up correctly. And secondly, this meant for the Polaroids that are on an angle, it actually ends up making them look better. If I was going to be using a ruler for those ones, I'd really have to make sure that any of the lines I'm doing, between two edges that join at a corner, they really need to be at a 90 degree angle, otherwise it would just look a little bit odd. By free drawing the Polaroids, it adds a little bit of character, and it's just a bit more forgiving on those ones that are on an angle. For the initials for each day of the week, we're again using those black boxes with the white typewriter font. Because these boxes were a little bit smaller, I attached double-sided tape before cutting them up, rather than going in with my tape roller. This was a nice way to save myself some time, just because using a tape roller on the smaller pieces of paper is really fiddly and can be time-consuming. In terms of decoration, I kept this setup a lot more minimal than I have for our previous giveaway journal setups. I figured for this month at least, it gives our giveaway winner an opportunity to do some decorating of their own, so with space along the edges and also that section at the top. This could be used to add in a quote, or some kind of a note section, some extra doodling, or a place to put some kind of a tracker. For instance, I know a lot of people on YouTube like to have a little space on their monthly log to compare their number of followers at the start or end of the month, but this could of course be used for anything that you want to track. So it could be your savings at the start and end of the month, your weight at the start and end of the month. You could also use the space for a priorities list, or really anything you want. In terms of timing though, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, the monthly log took about 15 minutes. With that one finished though, it was then over the page and onto the habit tracker. 
For both the habit tracker and the mood tracker, I did the same trick of putting the double-sided tape on the paper before cutting out each of the letters, because these ones are even smaller again. Each of the little black boxes we have for these headers are 8mm by 8mm, which on the dot grid of the journal doesn't actually look that small, but while I was cutting it out, seemed very small. <laughs> Perspective is a funny thing. For the habit tracker though, I'm using more of the Polaroid style, where each of the habits are contained within a rectangle, with dimensions that are similar to a Polaroid. For the habit trackers in this journal, I've opted in for the mini calendar style, so where each of the habits is given a little mini calendar grid. For each of the habit trackers, our giveaway winner can set themselves up a key, where they have a colour or symbol or way to fill in the mini calendar to represent either the habit happening or not happening. You can see that to draw in the grid, I'm just using a light grey Tombow in the colour N89. And then I did the borders for each of the Polaroids in the black fine liner. You can see that under each of the mini calendars for each of the habits, there's a space for our giveaway winner to write down what habit is actually being tracked. And on this page, there's space to track nine habits. Given the amount of line work for each of the mini calendars we had on this layout, the time taken was a little bit longer, coming in at about 20 minutes. But in the grand scheme of how long some of my layouts in my own journal take, this is still a pretty speedy setup. At least for me. On to the other side of the spread, and it's now time for the mood tracker. Again, I wanted to incorporate more of our Polaroid theme by having one little Polaroid for each day of the month. The inside of the Polaroid, or where the picture normally would be, can then be filled in with a colour or a pattern or maybe a doodle to represent the overall mood for the day. I know that some people are a little hesitant or not very inclined to use a mood tracker because they recognise that a lot of the time, the day isn't necessarily just going to contain one mood. The way that I personally get around this anytime I use a mood tracker is that if I have multiple moods in a day, I will either colour in my mood tracker based on the one that I had for the majority of the day, or I'll actually just use multiple colours in the same box. So if a good chunk of my day was really positive, but then part of it was actually quite negative, I'll have the majority of the box in that positive colour, and then a small portion of it in the negative colour. In our last giveaway journal, on each of the mood trackers, I drew in a bar at the bottom to set up a scale for each of the possible moods. But in this journal, I've just left a blank space on each of them as a place for our winner to set up their own key. In terms of timing though, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, the mood tracker took roughly 19 minutes to set up, and then we're flipping over, leaving our winner two blank spreads for any other trackers or collections they may want, and moving on to something that's a bit new for our giveaway journal plan with me's, which is a weekly log. In this journal, I set up the weeklies for alternating months in some different styles, so weeklies for January, March, and May. This is a nice balance between letting our winner trial some different weeklies and also giving them the opportunity to set up some of their own. For the style we're using here in January, this one is very much a take on what I call the eight box weekly. So dividing the spread into eight equal size sections with one for each day of the week and another for notes. I will say I do very much appreciate the simplicity of a Polaroids theme. It's a very much approachable theme, which would be really good for beginners. Question of the day for you though, what is a simple bullet journal theme that you've done before in your journal? It's always good to have some simple theme ideas for particularly busy months, or when you're not feeling like doing anything that's too time consuming or challenging. Make sure to check out the comments from other people to get yourself some more inspiration. But for the final flip through, we have the Polaroid camera cover page, the calendar style monthly log with little Polaroids for the days of the week, the mini calendar habit tracker and mini Polaroid mood tracker, two blank pages for additional trackers or collections, and then the weekly logs for the entire of January in that eight box style. As I said, a nice simple theme that would be easy enough to recreate. If you do recreate any of these layouts and post them on social media, Make sure to tag me so that I can check them out. I do always love to see and comment on your recreations. As always team, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you hadn't already and felt so inclined, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. Until next time, bye.